Example 67. The following table gives the probability that X patients out of four will survive five years after receiving a diagnosis of early stage lung cancer. Calculate the expected value for the random variable X, calculate the standard deviation, and use Chebyshev's rule to produce an interval which will capture at least 75% of the X values. Okay, so when you're doing this problem, I don't think it's um, any mystery what they're asking us to do. They're pretty explicit. They say calculate the expected value, the standard deviation, and then apply Chebyshev's rule to the data. It's just very time consuming to do this. So what I've done here is I've taken the table of data and I've kind of uh, written it so that it has vertical columns as opposed to horizontal rows. That's going to make our life a little easier as we do the calculations. And I've showed um, the start of the process that we have to use to get the expected value. So we already saw videos on how to do that. You know, we have to multiply the x times p of x columns, or sorry, the x and the p of x columns to get the x times p of x column. And then when we're done, we'll add that up. That will give us our expected value. So we're going to do that first. Before we get to the rest of those calculations, I just want to uh, actually just talk about how to interpret this. So remember, x here is the number of patients out of four who end up surviving a five-year period. So the chance that none of them survive is only about 5%. The chance that all four survive is only about 8%. And then there are all the other probabilities in between. Okay, so that's what we're looking at here in this problem. Not a very happy subject matter, but you know, it's an interesting one. So what we're going to do from here though is we're going to continue by multiplying x times p of x all the way across, and then we'll get our average. So let's go ahead and do that. If we actually do 2 times 0 0.372, we'll get 0.744, and if we do 3 times 0 0.280, we'll get 0 0.840, and if we do 4 times roughly 8%, we get 0.316. Okay, so that's our uh, initial x times p of x multiplication. Now we're just going to sum that up to get our average. So let's do that. We'll have you know, 0 plus 0.22 plus 0.744 plus 0.84 plus 0.316. And when we're done, we get 2.12. So 2.12. So that's our initial... Um, calculation, the first thing they ask us to do, that is our mean, right? So we have the mean. Now from there what we want to do is fill out the rest of the calculations in the table to produce this formula. Now this formula is a little complicated. It's the population variance formula. When we're done we'll take the square root and that will give us our standard deviation. The formula here, this is all just different ways to express the same relationship, but you ultimately want to use this to do the calculation. This is sort of the computational version of the formula. And what they're telling us that we have to do is we have to create a column called x squared times p of x. So like the x times p of x column, but only thing the x will be squared, we're going to create that column and we're going to sum it just like we did here. And that number will be used along with the mean that we just calculated to produce the variance. Once we have the variance, we'll then take the square root of it and we'll get the standard deviation. All right, so to do the rest of these calculations that are needed, we're going to need to square all the x values. So I'm just going to come here and quickly square the x values. So 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, and 4 squared is 16, right? So I've produced all the squares of my x values. Now what I want to do is take those x squared values and I want to multiply them times the p of x column so that I can then produce the x squared times p of x column. All right, so I have an extra column here that we're going to create. So remember, it's x squared times p of x. You might want to, just to be careful, use something to block out this column so you don't inadvertently grab the wrong number. So I'm going to do that here. I'm going to go ahead and put my pen there so it blocks off what's going to, you know, maybe possibly confuse me. Because sometimes when you're doing this multiplication, you'll grab the number from this column and multiply by this. So you want to be careful to do it this times this produces this. Okay, so if you do that, of course, 0 times this number is just going to give you 0. And 1 times that number is going to give you 0 0.220. Okay, and then we continue. 4 times 0 0.372 actually gives you 1.488. And then if we do 9 times 0 0.280, we get 2.52. And then if you do 16 times 0 0.079, you get 1.264. Okay, so all that completed now gives you your x squared times p of x column. Now this says we should sum that, so we're going to add all those numbers together. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that next. 
to do that, we're just going to do what you expect, right? Just add them all together. Zero plus 0 0.22 plus 1.488 plus 2.52 plus 1.264. 1.264. And when we're done, we get 5.492, 5.492. So 5.492 is the sum, and remember what this is. This is the sum of x squared times p of x. That is not our variance. To get our variance, we're actually going to have to plug it into the formula here. The formula, actually I'll do it over here so we have some space to work. We're going to say sigma squared is equal to the summation of x squared times p of x minus the mean squared. So we're going to plug in these numbers. This quantity here, this summation of this column, is just the 5.492. So 5.492 minus the 2.12, because that's our mean, right, squared. All right, and let's see what that gives us. So the variance will be equal to, we have the 5.492 in my calculator. I'm just going to subtract off the 2.12 squared. And when I'm done, I get the answer 0.9976. So that's my variance, but remember, ultimately, I want my standard deviation. So the standard deviation is going to be the square root of that number, right? Take the square root of the variance to produce the standard deviation. So if I raise that to the half power, it's the same as taking the square root. And I get almost the same answer because, of course, this is close to 1, and the square root of 1 is basically 1. So the same thing. This is going to be almost the same because we're taking the square root of a number that's pretty close to 1. So 0.9988, let's say, if we round out to four decimal places. That is your standard deviation, right? Okay, so we have our standard deviation, and we have our mean. This means we're actually able to use Chebyshev's theorem at this point, right? Chebyshev's theorem says that within two standard deviations, above and below this mean, you will capture 75% of all the x values. So let's do that. Let's take this mean and let's subtract two of those standard deviations from it. Let's do the same thing but add two standard deviations. So in other words, I'm going to say, hey, this 2.12, let's subtract two of those standard deviations, which were 0.9988. And let's do the same, 2.12 plus 2 times 0.9988. Okay, let's see what that gives us if we do that. So I'm going to do 2.12 minus 2 times 0.9988. And when I do that, I get a number that's pretty close to 0. It's 0 0.1224. It's close to 0, but not 0, right? And then I'll do the same, but I'm going to add this time that two standard deviation value. So when I do that, I get 4.12, let's say, just for round numbers. So actually, I could carry it out to four if I did it the same as before, but it doesn't matter, actually. So let's just leave it the way it is. And then from there, what we're going to say is that, hey, at least 75% of the x values will be inside the interval. So will be inside the interval. Okay, and what we want to say about this ultimately is that what we're saying is that 75% of the time we'll have between 1 and 4, or at least 75% of the time we'll have between 1 and 4 patients um, make it the full five years without dying from the cancer. So between 1 and 4 patients could be any value between 1 and 4. The reason why I say that is because you notice 0 is not in the interval, right? 0 is actually outside of the interval, it's below the interval, right? So on a number line, 0 is not included in this space. But 1 is in there, 2 is in there, 3 is in there, and 4 is in there. So any one of these can occur inside that interval. So we're saying at least 75% of the time when we put four people into the hospital that are suffering from this cancer, um, you know, at least 75% of the time between 1 and 4 will end up surviving by the end of the period. Now that's using Chebyshev's rule. In fact, actually, this data is almost bell-shaped if you think about it. You know, 
look at the, where the mean would be located. It's around two, right? And of course, when you think about the space on equal sides, it seems almost symmetric. And so if you had a drawing, a picture of the histogram related to this data, it'd be pretty close to a bell shape. And you could use then the empirical rule, which should say that within two standard deviations, plus and minus, we should capture 95%. And actually, you don't even need either one of these rules. You can just add up these probabilities, right? What's the probability that you have between one and four people surviving the cancer after five years? Well, add these numbers together and you'll get your answer. And since this is the only one outside of that span from one to four, and this one's about 5%, sure enough, the probability here is about 95%.